Hey guys, I'm Lucas and this is the story of my Kobo Space Program. Welcome to the Never Ending Glory. After the failed moon landing attempt in last episode, it's time to take the gloves off. Kerbalkind will step foot on the moon, period. The guys from the R&D focused their efforts into developing better fuel systems, better flight controls including small reaction wheels and lighter propulsion systems. I do of course sign some contracts to make funds by the way. Poor Henlong Kerman is trapped in moon orbit and while rescuing him, I can also test a radial decoupler. This will be Moon Mission 3 and I must succeed. The first stage is a massive booster using 7 engines. On top sits the transfer stage which will bring Jebediah to the moon. The payload consists of a lander with 2 capsules from which one is a drone which will hopefully rescue Henlong. I am not entirely sure about the Delta V but what could possibly go wrong with such a beast. For a direct burn to the moon I wait until it almost touches the horizon of our launch site. This should do it. To the launch pad. Throttle at 50, 80, 100%. Go Jeb, go Moon Mission 3. I go for a rather steep inclination because the second stage is relatively weak thrust wise. Main engine cutoff, separation and second stage ignition. Now a quick coasting phase to get the maximum engine's efficiency in space. Almost perfect. And cut off. Jeb is on his way and he looks confidential as usual. He heads directly toward the moon. Wait a second. Oh, that aim. A quick burn to the side and we're fine again. I'll keep the orbit counterclockwise to match Hanlong's one. Okay, this looks good. Now circulize. And we're in orbit. Now I switch the capsules around so my drone can do its work. Hang on, Hanlong. But let's first bring Jeb to the moon. I do have to perform a quite drastic inclination change from equatorial to a polar orbit. I do again raise my apoapsis to perform the burn more efficiently. This is by the way because of the slower relative speed, which means the same amount of velocity has a much bigger impact on the trajectory. Ok, this looks just right. Now circulize again and Jeb is almost over his destination. A few correction burns and he's ready to land. I can't really see the ground gradient but the light edge there looks just right. Slowly. And touchdown confirmed. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be the right location yet. Billy Bobkin's relief has to be a little further up the hill. This is definitely too steep and I won't be able to land here but a quick temperature scan should do it while a single leg touches the ground. Ok that's it, terrific. Now back into the valley. Time for some more experiments and of course our first EVA. I hope the lander won't flip. Jebediah is the first Kerbal to step foot on the moon. A flag shall keep this historic moment in our memory. Now a little trip up the mountain again to get some more data. Whoa, 
a one kilometer jump, but it looks quite amazing. What a great view. And now carefully, if Jeb slams into the rocket he will be trapped here forever. Okay, that was close, but close enough. I think Jeb is ready to head home again. Oh oh, it would have been too good to be true if he had enough fuel to burn back home. But there is at least enough to make an orbit, so Jeb is fine. Such a close call again, but don't worry Jeb, I won't let you down. Having all the experiments in the pod, Jeb will have to wait for the rescue, which might be closer than it seems. Let's not forget about Henlong, my drone is on its way to rendezvous. It's a little tricky without SAS, but it's still easier than to rendezvous in low carbon orbit. This is again because of the slower orbital velocity. Now I do some maneuvers to align the target and the relative velocity vectors, while also keeping the target speed relatively high. The drone catches up with Henlong in no time. And here we go, hello Henlong, get into the capsule quickly. I have an idea, maybe I can dock Jeb's pot here and return with him together. I don't want to risk Henlong being trapped again, so I decide to do a quick calculation. I am sure I can return to Kerbin like this, but changing the inclination to dock with Jeb will again consume a lot of fuel. Ok, to calculate my delta V, I need my current mass, which is 1910 kg, the mass with empty fuel tanks and the exhaust velocity. 1 liter fuel weighs 5 kg, which means my dry weight should be roughly 1637 kg. The specific impulse of 300 seconds is nothing but the exhaust velocity divided by the gravity acceleration g to avoid unit conversion errors. This means we simply have to multiply it with a g again, and this is 2943 meters per second exhaust velocity. I do now put the values into the formula and get 455 meters per second of delta v. This is much less than I had expected to be honest. I was hoping for at least 800 meters per second. I decide to head home, which proves right looking at the amount of fuel I have left. Ok, now the final freefall back to Kerbin. These are my achievements on this mission so far. This is not much in scientific terms, because Jeb still harbors all the science data, but I do at least don't have to worry about running out of funds in near future. And splashdown. Han is back on Kerbin safely. Wow, over half a million funds again. Man Mission 3 used a budget of less than 50,000 funds, so Jeb is basically as good as home. However, this is another story of the never ending glory. Thank you for watching. <laughs>